Hello everyone, welcome to Take a Beat episode 14. I am Andreas, I'm a part of the church staff here at IES. And a lot of you are probably wondering why, where is Pastor Tirza? Why, where is Pastor Tirza? Where uh, is Pastor Tirza? Yes, Pastor <laughs> Tirza is away. She is in Bandung, blessing people right there. And she's given me the privilege to host the podcast. And let's take a beat, everybody. So, we have here a very familiar person, plus a very special one. And I think if I say this to you... Am I familiar uh, or special? Of You are probably both, and she is also both. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, I scored a point right there. That's good. But yes, welcome Pastor Dave and Sister Gigi. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, this Today, we're celebrating a ladies' weekend, and I just want to say... Happy Ladies Weekend for everybody who's watching right now. And we're praying for you. So uh, so we're ministering too for you. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> blessings for you. <laughs> Just got that out. <laughs> Leave All it right. in. All right, Pastor Dave, I want to ask you a very important question. Okay. Here. Number one, uh, what is your stand about women in ministry? Oh, that's a no-brainer. I mean, all you got to do is listen to my sermon. Um, you know, I'll tell you a secret. So I, I, I always read a lot. And uh, I grew up, you know, I grew up in the AG. It was really supportive. But as I was growing up, I realized that there were some stands that the AG took that was probably not what I would agree with. And to me, a really big issue was whether women could be ordained or not, you know. And I didn't want to ask. Because I knew what I believed, it would be ridiculous to not allow women to serve equally and everything else. And I was just afraid that, I, and I grew up being around women ministers. And I was just afraid that the AG would somehow have messed up on that one. And finally, I, I got the nerve to say, well, how does the AG feel about women in ministry? And my mom's like, I'm ordained. Your aunt is ordained. You know, all these women that you know that are like personal heroes to us, they're all women. How could you even ask that question? So uh, it's really clear to me that Scripture does not leave women out of any role of ministry. Now, that doesn't mean that the world always handles it right. Uh, you know, I know that people who don't believe that women have a role in, in the top levels or whatever their description is, I know they mean it, for many of them, they mean it sincerely. But I think it's just clearly wrong, and they're just blinded by their own prejudices. So, uh, do you have anything to say, Sister Gigi? Oh, or? I, I'll just say amen. I think, um, you know, I would even go as far as women in ministry um, is just as valuable as men in ministry. <laughs> you know, I don't think God has that kind of distinction that if you're a man, you have, you know, this kind of level and a woman, this, this kind of level. I think... Uh, obviously, we know that that God is is no respecter of person, and that means no respecter of gender. And you know, it's it's not about who does the work, whether female or male. There's you know, they're equally valuable and equally important. Obviously, men has uh, you know, men have roles that only men can can. Um, fill and there are roles also that only women can fill so but women in ministry i mean it's not even you know it's a given right <laughs> in you know like i said god is uh, no respecter of persons so amen and speaking to that though uh because we uh, you you preach about women in uh ministry then there's a few women romans 16 what about phoebe and junia do you think they're a pastors or what are the precision there? Well, you know, I, I think, it, you know, you'll hear a lot of people say this. This is the biblical model for the church. And, and, and we don't really know what all those things were. We know there was a word called overseers or translated overseers, or maybe you might translate it something else like that. And, and we know there were people who were referred to as deacons. And that, that word deacon literally means to serve. And yet there was clearly, it was also kind of a title and we know that there were women who felt who 
who had that position. But we don't know what the relationship was between them. Like I mentioned tonight, uh, in the in the in the structure of the synagogues, and and they were all the early Christians were all from that background. In the structure of the synagogues, there were like elders of the synagogue, and then there were like uh, this this intermediary level. And because they had that background, that that level took care of all the facilitating, and like the host would usually be in that level. So it's logical to think there's a possibility the early church would have been organized that way, but we don't know. And because we don't know, it's just there. It's just not really fair for us to say Paul calls Junia an apostle, and people can argue about what it meant. But Paul used that title to you know the the word literally means messenger who's sent. And because of that, uh, he considered her that, and, 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 and she's outspoken among the apostles. You have to really twist that around to make it say, oh yeah, she wasn't really an apostle, but all the apostles respected her. That's really not the plain meaning of the text. If, she, if Junia was a man, and, and for like 1,500 years, the church tried to pretend like she was a man, when she was a man, they all thought she was an apostle. But when they admitted that she was a woman, now they're saying, no, 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 that's not really what it means. They're just jumping through hoops. It's silly. Uh, I'll give you another example uh, for those who keep track of this sort of thing. There's a lot of concern because some of the things that Paul says in, in, in uh, the pastoral epistles and a couple other places about women speaking. And, and yet um, in 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about how women should be attired when they pray or prophesy. So you can say they weren't allowed to speak, but they were allowed to pray and prophesy. Where do you get this conclusion that he really meant that they weren't allowed to speak at all? If there's a certain way they're supposed to be dressed when they pray and prophesy, they can pray and prophesy. Prayer and prophecy requires speech, you know, unless they were doing sign language or something like that. So there's no way that you can take that away. It's actually segue to the next question that I want to ask you about 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 to 15. See if you can uh, put it there. Uh, it says that women uh, cannot speak, cannot teach men, and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure you know about the first, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, how do I, you I, reconcile that, you know? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of really good stuff. I mean, somebody who's watching who has that question, uh, they should look at some of the really good stuff that out, is out there. Uh, there's a guy that, that's a friend of ours. He pastors IES in, in Bondo, Waldemar Kowalski. Waldemar has a PhD in New Testament from University of Manchester. He did most of, an awful lot of his work at, at Cambridge. Top-notch scholarship. And there's some really good stuff that's out there on Vimo, which you, you can't get without a VPN here. But there's also some of it out on, on YouTube where he deals with this from a from a textual perspective, okay? So I, I won't try and do that because I, you know, I don't have those kind of things. But what what is involved there is Paul is reacting to a temporary situation. He's not laying down a rule for all time in all places uh, because uh, it, it that's not how it's structured. Now, if you want to say that women aren't allowed to teach like some churches say, well, they can teach other women and they can teach boys until they're 12. You know, if you want to say that, I, I don't know where you get that. And also, what 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 on earth was going on with, uh, with Priscilla and Aquila? Because Priscilla was able to teach Apollos. And if Apollos is this great apostle who's so good that people don't want to follow Paul, they want to follow him, how can she's allowed to teach him? Because it doesn't say anything, oh, you know, you're not allowed to teach in a class more than five people or something like that. So that would be my response. So it's absolutely okay to look at it in like historical perspective instead of applying it on, a, okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I, I let, let's be realistic. So one of the big discussions in, in, in First Timothy is how do we deal with that? And we recognize these things are what we call occasional documents. And he's writing about certain circumstances, right? And so uh, in First Corinthians, he tells uh, the women to rest, wear head coverings when they pray and prophesy. How many of our modern churches make women wear head yeah, things? That's true. Yeah, so we, we, we make this a rule that we can never break, and this one we say, ah, don't worry about it, it doesn't really matter. You know, uh, where is it that Paul tells uh, whoever he's, I think he's writing to Timothy, and he tells him to stop by and pick up his manuscript and his cloak? Have you ever been to, to uh, whatever is the name of the town there? I'm getting old, I don't remember, but um, 
uh, 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 have you ever been there to pick up Paul's cloak and his manuscripts? No. Of course you haven't. <laughs> well, everybody knows that's stupid, Pastor Dave. Everybody knows that only meant to that original audience in that place in that time. Mm -hmm. So how do you pick these rules? I see. That was pretty heavy. Now, I just want to move on to Sister Gigi right now. Uh, who is your role model? Uh, it doesn't have to be in the Bible. Someone someone that you looked up to. And what are the biggest lessons you learn from your role model? I've never actually thought of... Um, I think I tend to... Um, look up to women if you would say that would be like a role model I don't have like big names to look up to but I, I, I tend to look up to people who are not so popular people who don't you don't really see them often who are in the background people who don't get the most of the time don't get the credit they deserve those are the people I want to look up to and I want to emulate because they have learned that it's not about them. That it's about, about um, first of all, it's about the Lord. And then second of all, it's about the work of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, reaching out to people who don't know Jesus, whether male or female. I tend to look to those kinds of women mm -hmm who are really uh, in our in our in the way we would categorize them in the world would be really a nobody mm -hmm. people who don't have titles and one for instance one of the people that I um, I, I just hold very dear in my heart she is what we she is actually the sister of my dad's mom. Mm -hmm. So she, in the Philippines, she would be called a grandmother too. So, but she would be like the grandmother number two. She's oh, not like, but um, her name, is, we call her Lola. And my Lola, Lola means grandmother. It's sort of like a grand, uh, like. You know, grand aunt, something grand aunt. like oh, that. Okay. But um, Lola uh, she moved, um, she was a single mom. She had a son uh, out of wedlock. And um, she moved in from the province, moved in with us when my brother was born. So my brother now is is about, as what, 64? So so she's been with us from the time my, my second sibling was born. So she was really the one who helped raise all of us. And because she came from the province and um, she was quite a, you know, you know, she was, she broke all the rules, you know. <laughs> um, when she came, when we all became a born again believer, she also became a born again believer. And she was actually um, illiterate. Her highest uh, education was, I think, second grade, third grade. So, you know, she knows some, you know, she knows how to read numbers, but, and yet God touched her mm -hmm. and, um, because the power of God has no limit, right? right? So even for her who did not know how to read or write, the, the, her testimony on how she served God through serving others, um, to me, you know, when I think about role model, I think of her because, she is somebody who, you know, like I was telling you about people who don't get credit, who really serve and they don't, it's because it's not about them. So uh, I, I think, I, you know, I think of her. She is somebody, um, I just love her dearly. I mean, she's gone home to be with the Lord long time ago. Um, I think when, when was that about? Yeah, before even my daughter was born, you know, she was, but she loved Jesus. Um, she learned how to to pray through just reading to listening to the Bible you know those days we you know she had a cassette tape you know that's how and man when she would pray mm -hmm. we would, sometimes we would ask her to pray for the food and stuff 
she is like she would take a long time almost like preaching you know so we stopped asking her to pray because she took so long to pray because she was so <laughs> gung-ho yeah. she was so gung-ho for jesus so yeah. oh, okay so is besides that is there anyone from the church you know that mm-hmm. maybe you don't see or <laughs> I'm not trying to lead anybody. Right, right. It's just, you know. Oh, there's, there's, there, there's a lot in the church. <laughs> and, and um, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't have, I don't have like one forever, my role model forever and ever. Oh, one of, um, maybe I would say my, my um, uh, mother-in-law, Dave's mom. She was just a wonderful lady. She was very, um, uh, she was really just a really good woman Mm -hmm. and a lot of the things i do the way i run my my home the way even the way i parent isabel and stuff like that um i copied it from her Mm -hmm. um so i i'm blessed to have had that long enough time to be with her uh, we didn't really, you know, when by the time Dave and I got married, she was already living in different parts of the world because they were like our boss. But, but yeah, she would be a person that I um, I look up to. Um, and her name is Betty Jo. <laughs> so. hey, shout out to Betty Jo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to go back to Pastor Dave right now. Uh, let me let me circle back around mm-hmm. to the one you asked. I looked it up. Yeah, if, uh, the, the issue is First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, I think it is. And the line there that brings a lot of people in is this line, I don't allow women to teach or, and then it's like translated exercise authority over men. And, and, and really the idea there is usurp authority over men. All right. I just want to ask a question. Do you think that Paul is suggesting that he allows men to usurp authority over men? You know, so the behavior is not gender specific. The behavior is assuming or taking authority over other people. So that's just one part of that answer. And it's a complex answer. I'll go back. What's your next question? All right. So my next next question will be, uh, why is there not many women's role, like blatantly imp- explicit women's role in the Bible? Well, I, I think there are. I mean, I, I we read them. We read them. We read uh, there's there's what? 20 something people that Paul mentions almost half of them are women and actually of the ones he he says something good about more are the women you know and so he clearly says these women are good it's just that we haven't read it that way so Paul says oh yeah this woman has helped so many people and he uses a technical word that is applied to a patron who supports different people and we think, oh, yeah, like she helped by cooking the rice or something like that, you know. So our, 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 let me ask you this question. Who was the first people who shared the good news that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? The very first evangelist. Oh, it was women. It was women. Yes. Yeah. And yet, and yet we don't often think of that, True. you know. And we, it's almost like when we read that story, uh, Jesus tells them, go and tell Peter and the others, you know. And, and so the first person they got the message from was was the women and then it's like uh they didn't really believe it mm-hmm. you know and yet we make them the heroes of the stories because then they go and everything else well no they got the message from people who believed it and then they didn't believe it so they should come out way ahead in that story they just don't I see. okay uh still relating to that question though this is something that i've been thinking uh along the line of this conversation do you think uh i believe that the bible is the living word of god and throughout the time it is always uh, dynamic and changing do you do you do you what do you think about uh the bible is is there any impact uh for the the rights of the women so so should the bible help us treat women better correct yes and i absolutely believe it should help us treat women better the Bible, one thing that's really important when you read the Bible, especially when you read the Old Testament, things that are reported in the Bible are not necessarily endorsed in the Bible. Exactly. So it talks about the terrible things that people did. And we should see that God is a God who cares for women just as much as he does for men. Mm-hmm. In fact, the, a lot of the Old Testament rules that people get worked up because it doesn't seem fair, it's much fairer and treats women much better than any culture and society was doing at the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, 
the, the women had very little rights during the first century, mm-hmm. right? A woman was a property of her husband, father until she became the property of her husband. And yet, in the church, women actually found a place. You know, I, I've, I've used this story a lot, but in about 113 AD, we have the letter that <laughs> Pliny the Younger wrote to the Emperor Trajan, where he talks about, I've arrested a bunch of Christians, mm-hmm. and I, we tortured their leaders, two women, slaves. So... You know, the church, within a within 80 years of Jesus dying, the church had overturned slavery so a slave could be the leader of a church right. and overturned gender bias so the woman could be the leader of a church. But the church kind of went backwards over time. And, uh, and uh, you know, a lot of the churches have looked down on the role of women. And, you know, I mentioned tonight that, that you know, the, usually the only role model we offer for women is to be like Mary. And that's not Mary's fault. There are a lot of other tremendous women in the Bible, but, you know, they tell the girls, you know, oh, be silent like Mary, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, so it's like, it's, it's really, the, the Bible really influenced uh, the modern rights of, you know, being, because being, it's different from the Old Testament and yeah. the New Testament right now. No, right? no, the Bible, the Bible hasn't influenced the mm-hmm. way the church has responded to this, and that's part of the problem. We respond more to culture than we do to the Word of God. So the church I grew up in, when the Assemblies of God was first found in the United States, 30% of our ordained ministers were women. Wow. And yet over history, as as the churches sort of rebounded against what they consider to be radical feminism mm. and some of the extremes of that they became it became harder and more difficult so in the place in Missouri the small town in Missouri where my relatives all became Pentecostal believers and the relatives of some other families the ones who preached there were women and it wasn't unheard of to have women preachers mm-hmm. it's not so common these days and uh, it's unfortunate because women have a way of looking at things uh, that's a different perspective for men. Oh, I see. Do you have, In fact, mm-hmm. the the Assemblies of God was founded by, it started off with the two sisters who... Well, the one in Couch. Oh, the one in Couch. Yeah. And, my, and, and my hometown, the ones who went and preached her were a 19-year-old and her 14-year-old sister. sister. And they had like revival meetings every night. So that's how mm-hmm. that... You know, that movement started there yeah. 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 in the town of Couch, Missouri. <laughs> yeah, my mom was ordained. My aunt was ordained. Mm. Uh, I worked very, very joyfully in the Philippines with Sister Virgie Cruz. It's one of the most dynamic people I've ever worked with. And, and she was a woman, mm-hmm. you know, that didn't keep her from doing things. Okay, awesome. Another question. This is just pop off my mind. So, uh, I, I just want to ask you, Sister Gigi, what do you think about the movement feminism? I just I just want to know if you are. Do you I, have an I opinion think, about that? I I think feminism. There are uh, there are good sides to it, and there are not so good sides to it. There there are things that promote um, and encourage women to be. To not to be confident to to speak up mm-hmm. on the things that they believe in, but but it has become a way also for um, it you know it's become a platform where it's it has become politics. You know, it's not really so much what what women believe in, but it has become a platform whereby they can fight against. The men, or mm-hmm. you know, or or other sectors, or things like that. Um, but I think, you know, in in any kind of views, there would be things that are good and not good. I'm just going back to you know, we're talking about the influence of the Bible Correct. with with women. Um, I I think God is God is so good. Then when when uh, the Bible talks about the women because there's a lot of women widowed women like in the churches in the early churches that when God talked about taking care of people he what he said was to take care of the orphans to take care of the widows he said that he will be a husband to the husbandless you know and a father to the fatherless so God has always looked after women yeah 
you know and and he's never really talked about the men because obviously those days too the men always had the upper hand right they always right. have you know they they are more advantage they had they had more advantages than women but when we think about what god was always he was always after women's protection and women's rights because there were a lot of them and he 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 cares for everybody and he's never said you know i'll be you know for those who don't have wives i'll be with you yeah. no he only talked about those who are widows and orphans and things like that so do you have anything to add pastor day for nope All i right. fully agree awesome <laughs> <laughs> all right i just want to close this podcast with one very encouraging question uh so you sister Gigi, you are a, a role model to a lot of females especially in our church uh what do you what, what do you want <laughs> yes it is it says it here <laughs> what do you want for all the ladies to know about themselves and about god I think one of the things that I want the ladies to know about first about having their relationship with God is that regardless of your past, um, God can still um, accomplish the things that he has in their life. Uh, whether or not they were brought up in a Christian home, whether or not they are or educated well or um, it, like I said, God is uh, no respecter of person. God mm -hmm. will accomplish the things that he wants to accomplish, male or female. But especially for the for for female, sometimes we think of ourselves are, uh, ha, ha, as the we are the lesser gender. Mm -hmm. And I want the women to know that in God um, they can accomplish things that they didn't even think possible mm. as long as I have the presence of the Lord in their lives as long as they will continue to uh, their life will be driven by their faith in God and faith in Jesus that they can accomplish things that that they might see impossible that God can accomplish those things amen Hey man, do you have anything to add, Pastor Dave? Or? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take a shot at this. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves in a world where it seems that often men are promoted as leaders and women are promoted as servers. Yeah? Um, and that, that holds true in a lot of circumstances. And not everybody's happy with that, but it seems that that happens a lot. And um, we probably can't get away from that immediately. But I want, I want Christians to think about this. Jesus says that the greatest in the kingdom of God is the servant of everyone. And, you know, we play with that and we say, yeah, because if you're a good servant, you'll, you'll turn into a good leader. That's not what it says. It says the one who serves is the greatest. And so for every person, male or female, whoever finds himself in a position where what they do isn't acknowledged, and they end up serving somebody else's plan, somebody else's need, anything else like that. Remember, in God's eyes, you're the greatest. You're the greatest. Mm -hmm. And you want to be great in his eyes and not in anybody else's eyes, no matter what. I'm not saying women should be serving men. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, unfortunately, a lot of times in our world, they get forced into that role. But God sees things completely differently. So you know now who's the greater one in our family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Amen. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right. I wish I could have just stayed here a little bit longer, you know, but our time is up. I just want to say thank you to you guys, Pastor Dave and Sister Gigi, for being here. Now, guys, thank you for tuning in again one more time. If you guys haven't connected to us, please go to Facebook. Please go to Instagram and our online community. And... Have a chat with us. Shoot us a DM so that we know that you're there. All right. Stay tuned for the next episode for next week. And thank you. Thank you.